Okay, uh, sorry it took so long for this these classes. I just got, like I said, I got that new schedule going on, but I'm hoping this should be over in another month. Um, but in the meantime, I'm still gonna try to get these classes up here. I'm sorry for those that come up here all the time uh, for leaving y'all without nothing for so long. I haven't really recorded the classes because we've been having some difficulties here and there, but it's okay. Um, yeah, I'm just glad to, we can go ahead and finish out this temple class. So, and I noticed, praise yeah, I got one more person that's uh, what they call that, uh, um, I guess, uh, subscribed, which is good. That means that somebody is sharing this information with somebody else. And hopefully they can get what they need up here. I pray that Yahuwah does that, open up their eyes and their ears so that they can understand and then touch their mind, make sure that it's open. So we're going to do this conclusion to the temple. I want to go over this thing real quick. It's not going to be a long class. I just want to touch on the last part where we left off. And uh, we're going to start putting a whole lot of other videos up here. I'm going to start concluding a lot of these things that's still open, like this one, uh, the, uh, the priesthood, um, part one of the priesthood anyway, because we're going to go to offerings next. And the... Um, uh, Hokeem and Mishpatim Black History. So uh, let's go ahead and get started on this. I be who we come before you, Father, as always, thanking you for all things. Asking you, as always, Father, because we are men and we are dust, we are dirt. So asking you, Father, to forgive us for our transgressions, sins, and iniquity. Please, Father, have mercy on us. We also say, Father, as we get ready to start this class, we ask for those that do come up here and look at them. And we just thank you for them, Father. And we ask that you shine your face on them. We have a lot of people right now with this COVID thing. Um, a lot of few people in our class, some of their family members have been touched. We pray for them, Father. We ask that you remember them. Bring them out of this, Father, and put in their mind to come up here and start studying. Or just start studying somewhere, trying to find out about your Torah. So we thank you, Ab Yahuwah, for all things. As always, we know that you are the best knower and we magnify the name of Yahuwah. There is no other name besides that name where we can get salvation. So we thank you, Ab Yahuwah. We, we bless your name, Father. And for all things, Father, we are grateful. In Yahusha's name we pray, hallelujah. Okay, let's get to this now. So the last time we left off, we left off right here when they was, they was crying, men help Israel. This is a man that teaches all men everywhere against the people and the law and this place and further brought Greeks also into the temple and have polluted this holy place. When we look up this word Greek in, Greek in this setting, we see that it's saying that they're Hellenized, right? We're from the root number 1671, Greece. Okay, which equals, okay, right here, Greeks or Greece, unstable, the Mari when money. So we know right away, <clears throat> the one that's mixed, a mixed multitude, the one that's mixed is nobody else but Ephraim. He's the mighty one. He's the one, he's the cake half turned, light on one side, dark on the other one. He's mixed up. I'm really going to go into a lot of this, um, this class that I'm preparing about the Mashiach, which will be up there real soon. So, again, with that, I'm going to go through what a king is, and I'm also going to show you um, what's going on with the two houses of Israel so that you understand that. For those, some of, some of us already probably do, but I'm sure, it's, I know for a fact that some of us that don't, we need to understand that, again, because everything I try to show you guys is leading up to when you start reading Paul's writing, you understand what's going on, you cannot be tricked. Because most of the time in most churches, when they say brought Greeks in, they, the, the, these people are making it seem like these were the stranger, and it was not. Because the Mashiach said he only came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and we can show you who, who he commissioned Paul to go to. So the word Hellenist is the word used in the New Testament where it is usually translated as Greek, but sometimes Gentile, right? Because a lot of us was taught back in we first started learning this thing years ago, Genesis chapter 10, the table of nations, it says that the Gentiles are the Europeans. But in this setting, it's both. So it's, it's the Hebrews that was living amongst the Gentiles or scattered out. They got scattered. 
we're going to show you about this, but it won't be in this series. And so they mixed up with all kinds of people wherever they were scattered over, over a thousand years. You, you know they were. And they had forgot the old ways and they was living real, well, they was just living like the people around them. Whatever foods they ate, they ate. Sometimes some of these different nations, uh, well, the Greeks, for example, they like to eat raw meat, tear animals apart and eat them just like that. We're going to show you that. But that's going to be in the, in the, in the series, um, about, uh, the, the next one that comes up about the Messiah but does not refer to native Greeks, but to Hebrews who have adopted the Greek culture and language. So that's why even though they, they said they was bringing these different men or whatever, because you gotta remember, they didn't look like Judah, because Judah had been back from the Babylonian captivity, right? They didn't have to be found, but these people were scattered. They were supposed to be lost. And we know that, we, we know that some of them were, but we know some of them was always around the temple. We can show you that. Now, let's keep going. Hellenized, pronunciation, pronunciation Hellenized. Uh, uh, some, this is also British Hellenized because um, they're trying to, these people, they never stop trying to get in this thing without coming in through the gate. They want to hop the gate. They want to be robbers with object, make Greek or Hellenistic in form or character. It's a UK dictionary. Okay, and number 672, Greek, E-X-X, N-V, uh, uh, Helen, Helene, Helene, from 1671, a Helen, a Grecian, or inhabitant of Hellas by extent of Greek-speaking person, especially a non-Jew. So when it says non-Jew, we know that the house of Israel was not considered to be Jews. Anyway, this, this word Jew, I'm going to show you another lesson, it's fake. But it's, I mean, what really, it could say somebody that a non-Judahite, if you want to say that, somebody that wasn't from the tribe of Judah, right, or the house of Judah, which is Benjamin, Levi, um, and Judah, right? Gentile, Greek, strong. Now, most people would be thrown off at this point because it says non-Jew, but let's keep going. Translation, translating the Greek word ethnos in the New Testament as Gentile is problematic. While the word Gentile does mean one belonging to a tribal clan, it has come universally uh, mean a non-Jew. But we have seen the words goy and ethno do not mean a non-Jew. They mean one who belongs to a tribe or a clan. In Acts 21, 28, crying out, men of Israel, help, this is a man that teaches all men everywhere against the people and the law and this place and further brought Greeks also into the temple and has polluted this holy place. In a wider sense, the name embraces all nations, not Jews that were, that made the language, custom and learning of the Greeks their own. The primary reference is to a difference of religion and worship. Because remember, they had fallen away from the Torah. And then somebody, it, like, again, we're gonna see, it's, a, you know, it's always gonna be a mixture of people, but the message was for the lost sheep. But if you happen to have, uh, somebody, a proselyte from another country that was standing, they heard it. I mean, we've read this before that uh, the whole city came on the next Shabbat when Paul was teaching. So people always, that I mean, when the spirit opens up their understanding or they're hearing something they never heard before, it's just a father drawing them. They're going to come and try to find out about this thing. There is no separate thing. Christianity is it's, it's made up. I'm sorry. It's just made up. The book of Maccabees, one of the books of the Apocrypha, tells the story of the Jewish revolt about 150 years before the time of the New Testament. The Greeks, led by Antiochus uh, Epiphanes, conquered the land of Israel and forced the Jews to leave their national heritage and the Torah and begin following Greek culture. Because of, of the Jews' hatred for all things Hellenistic, including the culture and language. Now, this is, uh, you know, the way they should say this is, um, the Greeks led by Antiochus conquered the land of Israel and forced, the, and forced the Hebrews to leave their national heritage in Torah and begin following the Greek culture because the house of Judah hated uh, all things Hellenistic, including the culture and language. Judas Maccabee led the revolt against Antiochus, Epiphany destroying the Greeks and slaughtering those Jews that had adopted the Greek language and culture. You, have, you don't have a book of um, Apocrypha, you need to go get you one. But you need to understand how these people was actually dying, getting hung, and all these other things because they wouldn't eat any unclean food, and they would, and they still were circumcising their sons. 
just like it said from, from the very beginning. And in other words, I'm getting up on it in covenants. This revolt demonstrates the, the, the Hebrew hatred of the Hellenistic culture or the house of Judah's hatred of the Hellenistic culture and the incorrect assumption that Hebrews uh, or Israel freely adopted the Greek language during the time of the New Testament. All right. And I will make thee, Israel, a great nation or goy. See, Genesis 12 and 2. And of good report among all the nations, ethnos of the Hebrews, Acts 10 and 22. So that word ethno is, is now you'll see, I'm, I'm going to show you that. But like I said, I'm not going to get into a lot of that. I just wanted to kind of give you guys an understanding of why Paul was having these problems. But these wasn't these wasn't uh, 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 foreigners that you know, these people were just part of the lost sheep. The Gentiles, the Greeks were ethno, literally means nation. The word is used in the 2000 year old Greek Septuagint to translate a Hebrew word goy from Strong's number 1471, which also means nation. A nation is any group of people living and working under one rule. Many different nations I mentioned in the Bible, including the Canaanites, Egyptians, Moabites, Armenians, uh, and, the, and others. But more importantly, even Israel is called Goy or the nations. See, and that's what we got to understand. Or sometimes you're going to see, just going to say Gentile. But you got to use your inner linear to get to the bottom of it. You just can't read. I keep telling you, just can't read this off the top of just what you see on King James. No, you can't do that. So if you're going to be lost. When Paul preached to the nations <clears throat> in the book of Acts, he was doing what, Yah, what, what Yah, Yah, uh, Yeshua commanded, preaching to the lost tribes, the lost Goy ethnos of Israel. So does this, this cut out all the other nations? No, when Torah was given at Sinai, the natural olive tree is the house of Jacob, Exodus 19 and 3, uh, and the people of Israel so, sojourned from Ramsey to Sukkoth, about 600,000 men on foot, besides women and children. I heard a guy say, it was only 600,000 no, 600, men on foot, also women and children. A mixed multitude also went up with them and a very much livestock, both flocks and herds. So we had a house of Jacob or Judah, right? Because that's so that's going to really be uh, the house of Judah and and the house of Israel, right? So Luke one thirty two through thirty three says that there was going to be a redeemer sent, right? So from the house uh, from the the two houses here, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, physical descendants of uh, Israel and Judah, right? Now over here. We have the mixed multitude, which is Ephraim, right? Because Ephraim had the birthright. Joseph had the birthright, and it was transferred to Ephraim. If you want to understand more about that, you need to go and look at the uh, class on the um, uh, firstborn priest, right? So here, here we are with Ephraim. He's, a, he's mixed up with the other nation, and you have the other nations that's out here that want to hear this gospel as well, right? So we got strangers, sojourners, adopted, and grafted in. So everybody has to be really grafted back into this new covenant. We're going to show you that, but it won't be on this class. All right. So let's keep rolling. Uh, let's, you know what? Let's, let's go hit Mark. Mark 8 and 34. I don't want to miss anything, but I don't want this to go over because it's not that much more information. We're just going to do a little bit of reading about the last temple. And then we're going to move on from there. But I just want to close this up. Um, and so I'm going to start doing a lot of classes because I see it. I kind of notice y'all don't seem like y'all like the uh, classes when it's in group settings. Y'all like this. So I'm going to do more classes by myself. It seems like you guys respond more to them, which is fine. It, it's no big deal. Let's go to Mark. Whatever's going to get you to study. That's all I care about. Mark 8 and 34. <clears throat> okay. Now, and when, and when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whoever will save his life shall lose it, but whoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel, right, the commandments, the same shall save it. So this is, this is what's going on with this board here, right? But this is how this thing actually is broke down. You want to screenshot this? Go ahead and go ahead and screenshot this. But this is the message that the master prophet, right? The master messenger, king of Israel, was bringing. But he was after this house. 
because Judah was already back. He was already around the temple. He was already in the temple. But these had to be rescued. They had to be redeemed because we know if you went through the firstborn class, firstborn uh, class, um, you understand that the firstborn has to be redeemed. As it was back in the day, when in, in Moshe's time, the Mashiach is doing the same thing. Ain't nothing changing around here. Yah does the same thing. The alien living with you must be treated as one your, uh, uh, of your native born. Love him and yourself for for uh, you were aliens in Egypt. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim, Leviticus 19 and 34. You ought to have the same laws for the alien and the native born. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. These foreigners were to be treated the same as the Israelites. Even Paul in the New Testament understood this and recognized that anyone could join Israel just as they did in ancient times. Ephesians 2 and 12, that at that time you were without Mashiach, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope without Elohim in the world. All right? So, and I can, and you can, actually, you could also say this for Ephraim, because Ephraim was in the same situation. He was a, he's an alien. He's a stranger. For he forgot about the covenants. He forgot about the promise. Right? He didn't have no hope without Elohim in the world until the Mashiach came to pull him back. Now, the divide between the Jews who remain faithful to the Torah, those near, right? that's the house of Judah, and the Jewish culture and those who rejected the Torah, that's Ephraim, who was far, that's why he had to go be rescued and adopted the Greek culture, continued to exist until the first century AD. Then the house of Judah that adopted, the, I mean, well, the Hebrews that adopted the Greek culture and language were called Hellenes. That's out the Oxford Dictionary. So it's all over the place. I mean, you just got to know where to find it. For so says Yahuwah, David shall never lack a man to sit on the throne of the house of Israel. And the Levitical priest shall never lack a man before me to go to offer burnt offerings to burn a grain offering to prepare sacrifices continually. So it's um, a lot of people... I know Matthew Nolan was saying that the uh, well the priesthood is uh, that that they're not going to be doing these things in the kingdom. I don't know where he gets that from because this has already been prophesied in Jeremiah. See, this is what Yah is saying. See, for so says Yahuwah. So if he says it, it's going to be that way. Continually, it's going to be continually, right? We know the Mashiach came. But everything was put on hold because the priesthood was already rotten. We already had imposters all up in it. So he just killed it until he's going to, we're going to show you when he's going to bring all this stuff back. We're going to read that tonight. Now, this is Ezekiel's temple. This is how, this is how somebody just uh, from them that actually took the time and did the measurements. And I mean, I know this took a lot of study to put this together. But this is supposed to be a scale model of what it's going to look like, right? The outer eastern gateways, you got the northern gateway, southern gateway, you got a temple. I mean, everything is here, the outer court, inner court, right? Southern chamber for the uh, 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 Zodokite priest, because we're going to show you why. Uh, Zadok is going to be the one that's going to be doing it. See, we're we, we going to read that. We're going to read that in a few seconds. Now, <clears throat> this is the northern outer gate. See, the Levites that have gone astray, this is as far as they can go, right? Either at one of these gates, greeting or letting the people come in. That's it, right? And they're going to be doing, they, and, they, and they're going to end up being bloody. We're going to show you that. But see, Zadok is going to be the one, the high priest. He's going to be the one that's going to be able to come into the holy place, right? And, and, and you know, the most holy once a year and all that. So all going to be the same thing. Nothing is going to change. So now I want you guys to go to Ezekiel chapter 43. We're going to read Ezekiel chapter 43 through 47. We're going to close this lesson out. And I want to go ahead and tie up all these loose ends. Now, Ezekiel 43, verse 1. Afterward, he brought me to the gate, even the gate that looketh toward the east. And behold, the glory of Yahuwah of Israel, or the Elohim of Israel, came from the way of the east, and his voice was like a noise of many waters, and the earth shined with his glory. And it was according to the appearance of the vision, which I saw, even according to the vision that I saw when I came to destroy the city. And the vision was like the vision that I saw by the river Kebar, and I fell upon my face. And the glory of Yahuwah came into the house by the way of the gate, whose prospect is toward the east. So the spirit took me up and brought me into the inner court. And behold, the glory of Yahuwah filled the house. 
And I heard him speaking it to me out of the house and the man stood by me. And he said unto me, son of man, the place of my throne and the place of the soles of my feet, where I would dwell in the midst of the children of Israel forever. And my holy name shall, what? My holy name shall the house of Israel no more defile. So we're not going to be calling him Lord, God, Jesus, Buddha, Allah, none of these things. Neither they nor their kings <clears throat> by their whoredom, nor by the carcass of their kings in their high places. So they ain't going to have no churches and no, no temples and uh, all these other mosques. <laughs> ain't going to be none of that. They ain't going to be going to these type of high places because that's what those are, is high places. Right, they're not going to be laying up with them or learning from them because that's whoredom. And their settings of their threshold by my threshold, and their post by my post, the wall between me and them. They have even defiled my holy name by the abominations that they have committed. Wherefore I have consumed them in my anger. Now let them put away their whoredom and their carcasses of their kings far from me, and I will dwell in the midst of them forever. So this is what he wants us to do now as well. Thou son of man, show the house of, uh, to the house of Israel, that they may be ashamed of their iniquities and let them measure the pattern. If they be ashamed of all they have done, show them form of the house and the fashion thereof and the goings out thereof and the comings in thereof and all the forms thereof and all the ordinances thereof and all the forms thereof and all the laws thereof and write it in their sight that they may keep the whole form thereof and all the orders thereof and do them. This is the law of the house. What? Upon the top of the mountain, the whole limit thereof round about shall be most holy. So this is what he's just telling you. And then this is not the father's house yet. This is where the son is going to be at. But he's telling you, okay, this is my house. Father's kingdom and his house has not come down yet. This is during this thousand year millennium. But this is the rule of, these are the rules of the house. Right? It's going to be the commandments. It's, it just never stops. And these are the measures of the altar after the cubit. The cubit is a cubit and a hand breadth. Even the bottom shall be a cubit and a breadth of cubit. And the border thereof by the edge thereof round about shall be a span. And this shall be the higher place of the altar. And from the bottom upon the ground, even to the lower settle, shall be two cubits and a breadth, one cubit and one from the lesser settle, even to the greater. Settle shall be four cubits. Now let's do this right here. Let's, I'm going to jump over to, um, well, I'm going to jump down to verse 19. Let's, uh, you know what? Let me, let me keep going. Verse 15. Uh, so the altar shall be four cubits, and from the altar and upward shall be four horns. And the altar shall be 12 cubits long, 12 broad, square, and four squares thereof. And the settle shall be 14 cubits long and 14 broad and the four squares thereof. And the border about it shall be a half cubit. And the bottom thereof shall be a cubit about. And his stair shall look toward the east. And he said unto me, son of man, thus says Yahuwah Elohim, these are the ordinances of the altar and the day when they shall make it to offer burnt offerings. See, we told you this. We told you this already, right? Thereon and the sprinkle blood thereon, thou shalt give to the priest the Levites that be of the seed of Zadok, which approach unto me to minister unto me with Yahuwah, it says Yahuwah Elohim, a young bullet for a sin offering. This we're gonna learn this when we get to the office. It's the same thing. And thou shalt take of the blood thereof and put it on the four horns, see, of it and on the four corners of the settle and upon the borders round about. Thus shalt thou cleanse and purge it. Thou shalt take the bullock also of the sin offering, and he shall burn it in the appointed place of the house without the sanctuary. Same thing. And on the second day, thou shalt offer a kid of the goats without blemish for sin offering, and they shall cleanse the altar as they did cleanse it with the bullock. When thou hast made an end of cleansing it, thou shalt offer a young bullock without blemish and a ram out of the flock without blemish. And thou shalt offer them before Yahuwah. And the priest shall cast salt upon them. See, that's the, that's, that's the salt covenant. But we're going to learn about these covenants. And they shall offer them for a burnt offering unto Yahuwah. Seven days shalt thou prepare every day a goat for a sin offering. They shall also prepare a young bullock and a ram out of the flock without blemish for seven days. Because that's going to sanctify everything. Seven days shall they purge the altar and purify it. And they shall consecrate themselves. See, they're consecrating themselves. They're getting purified. And when these days are expired, it shall be that upon the eighth day, 
and so forth, the priest shall make your burnt offerings upon the altar and your peace offerings, and I will accept you, says Yahuwah. So the eighth day is just a shadow picture of the Father's kingdom when it comes down. But he's just showing you that's like that, that's what that means that you're going through the seven day purification. But the eighth day, it is done. It is purified. Right. And again, now they're going back to the to the basic offers that they do all the time. Like they just like they was doing before. Right. The peace offerings, burn offerings and peace offerings. Verse 40. Now, chapter 44. Then he brought me back the way of the gate of the outward sanctuary with looking toward the east and it was shut. Then says Yahoo unto me, this gate shall be shut. It shall not be opened and no man shall enter in by it because why? The, uh, the sovereign, the Elohim of Israel has entered in by it. Therefore, it shall be shut. Okay, he was talking about right in here. See, this is the, the Eastern inner gateway. This is where he's coming at. It is for the prince. Who is the prince? The Mashiach, the prince. He shall sit in it to eat bread before his father. All right, capital L, he shall enter by the way of the porch of that gate and shall go up by the way of the same. So here he coming up, he coming up in here. Boom, boom, past the altar, boom. He going, he coming in here to do what? To eat bread with his father. Then brought he uh, me by the way of the north gate before the house. And I look and behold, the glory of Yahuwah filled the house of Yahuwah. And I fell on my face. And and um, Yahuwah said to me, son of man, mark well, and behold, with thine eyes and hear with thine ears, all that I say unto thee concerning all the ordinance of the house of Yahuwah and all the laws thereof. He's telling you this again. And mark well the entering in of the house with every going forth of the saints. And thou shalt say to the rebellious, those that don't, and those that just refuse to do what he says, as keeping his, his commandments, statutes, and judgments, or his ordinances, even the house of Israel, thus says Yahuwah Elohim, O you house of Israel, let it suffice you of all your abominations, and that you have brought into my sanctuary strangers, uncircumcised in heart, and un uncircumcised in flesh. See, so when the Pharisees was telling uh, uh, Paul and the, the apostles, man, you know, they talking about, well, just let them do this for right now. No, they got to, they got to eventually, they, they have to be circumcised. That's part of the covenant. That goes back to the oath that he swore to Abraham. That cannot be broken to be in my sanctuary to pollute it, even my house when you offer my bread, the fat and the blood, and they have broken my covenant because of all your abomination. You have not kept the charge of mine holy things, but you have set keepers of my charge in my sanctuary for yourselves. Thus says Yahuwah Elohim, no stranger uncircumcised in heart. He didn't say no stranger, okay. No uncircumcised in flesh shall enter into my sanctuary of any stranger that is among the children of Israel. See? And the Levites that are gone away far from me when Israel went astray, which went astray way away from me after their idols, they shall even bear their iniquity. Yet they shall be ministers in my sanctuary, having charge at the gates of the house and ministering to the house. So this is where they're going to be at. That's it for them, right? Uh, and ministering to the house. They shall slay the burnt offering and the sacrifice for the people, and they shall stand before them to minister unto them. So the people are going to be looking at them covered in blood because this is where the animals was killed at anyway, out here. Then they was brought in. You know, or there's, uh, I mean, uh, sometimes it was done like in the inner court, actually. You know what I'm saying? You understand that, that how the temple was set up, like the first tabernacle didn't have all this. It just had to, you know, you just had your white fence around it. It's just uh, showing that it was pure. And the house, and then you had the, the house of uh, Solomon built, and you had the house that we just looked at before, with uh, which was Herod's house. It had nothing to do with the father or the son's house. Verse 12, because they ministered unto them before their idols and caused the house of Israel to fall into iniquity. Therefore, I had lifted up my hand against them, says Yahuwah, Elohim, and they shall bear their iniquity. And they shall not come near unto me to do the office of priest unto me, nor to come near to any of my holy things in the most holy place. See, so they can't even come up in here. They just going to be in the inner court or around here, around this area, killing these animals. Because even though as some of them, they have like these little gates. I got a scale model temple here. And they have like little tables out there and everything where they slaughter animals, wash it off. I mean, okay, now, but they shall bear their shame and their abomination, which they have committed. 
but I will make them keepers of the charge of the house for all the service thereof and for all that they have shall be done therein. So they're going to be still maintaining the house. They're going to be killing the animals. They're going to be bloody. But the priests, the Levites, the sons of Zadok, that kept the charge of my sanctuary, when the children of Israel went astray from me, they shall come near to me to minister unto me. They shall stand before me to offer unto me the fat and the blood, says Yahuwah. So here you got the ones that went astray. They're going to be bloody because they're going to be the ones killing the animals. They're going to hand off. They're going to, you know, they, then what they're going to do is because they, they, they got to come this way, right? Because this is going to be shut off. They got to come this way. So here they are. They're going to be handing over the animals and the blood and everything for Zadok to do the, 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 the offerings. They shall enter to my sanctuary, and they shall come near to my table to minister unto me, and they shall keep my charge. And it shall come to pass that when they entered in at the gates of the inner court, they shall be clothed with linen garments, and no wool shall come upon them, while they minister in the gates of the inner court and within. They shall have linen bonnets upon their heads, and shall have linen breeches upon their loins. They shall not girdle themselves with anything that causes sweat. And when they go forth into the other, other court, even into the other court to the people, they shall put off their garments when they minister and lay them in the holy chambers and they shall put on other garments and they shall not sanctify the people with their garments. Neither shall they shave their heads nor suffer their locks to grow long. They shall only pull their heads. All right, so they, that's even done. I mean, you mean let their locks grow long. <laughs> See, you all up in this book and don't even know it. Neither shall any priest drink wine when they enter into the court, right? Because remember what happened to um, uh, Aaron's two sons when they got drunk and put up that strange fire. Uh, let me see. Neither shall they take for their wives a widow nor her that is put away, but they shall take maidens of the seed of the house of Israel or a widow that had a priest before. And they shall teach my people the difference between the holy and the profane and cause them to discern between the unclean and the unclean. So he's going right back to the beginning. And this is what it's going to be in the new kingdom. So why, why all of a sudden, why, why would it be done away right now? I mean, he, he ain't never changing. And in controversy, they shall stand in judgment and they shall judge it according to my judgments. And they shall keep my laws and my statutes and all mine assemblies. And they shall hallow my Sabbaths. And they shall see Sabbaths, and they shall come at. And so that means that's not only they're going to be doing the, um, they're going to use the moon to count. And when they find what the Sabbath did, they're going to they're going to keep that, and they're going to keep the new moon. That's why it says Sabbaths. And not only that, you got your your feast days, which are Sabbaths, and they shall come at no dead person to the father, but but for father and for mother, or for son, or for daughter. For brother or sister that has no husband, they may defile themselves. And after he is cleansed, they shall reckon it to him seven days. And in the day that he go up into the sanctuary, into the inner court, to minister in the sanctuary, he shall offer his sin offering, says Yahweh Elohim, and it shall be unto them for an inheritance. I am their inheritance, and you shall give them no possession in Israel. I am their possession, right? Because even right here, 29, they shall eat the meat offering and the sin offering and the trespass offering and every dedicated thing in Israel shall be theirs. Just like it was before, it's going to be the same thing here. And the first of all, the first fruits of all things and every oblation of, of all, of every sort of, of your oblation shall be the priest. You shall also give it to the priest the first of your dough, that he may cause the blessing to rest in thine house. The priest shall not eat of anything that is dead of itself, nor torn, whether it be a uh, fowl or a beast. So, I mean, in, in the 45, chat 45, and um, it goes into uh, this, how the sacrifice is going to be. Okay, now let's, let's look at uh, chapter 46. Thus says Yahuwah Elohim. The gate of the inner court that look of toward the east shall be shut the six working day. But on the Shabbat, it shall be open. And in the day of the new moon, it shall be open. Okay, so we giving you two more. They, I just got done telling you that. And now he's telling you, okay, on the Sabbath, it's going to be open. And in the new moon, which is a Sabbath, but it's a little bit weaker Sabbath. It's kind of, but it's, but offering wise, it's stronger. It's going to be the same. And the prince shall enter by the way of the porch of that gate without and stand shall stand by the post of the gate and the priest shall prepare his burnt offering and his peace offering and he shall worship at the threshold of the gate 
Then he shall go forth, but the gate shall not be shut until the evening. Likewise, the people of the land shall worship at the door of this gate before Yahuwah in the Sabbath and in the new moons. And the burnt offerings that the prince shall offer unto Yahuwah in the Sabbath, they shall be six lambs without blemish and a ram without blemish. And the meat offering shall be an ephah for a ram and the meat offering for the lambs as he shall be able to give and a hen of oil to the ephah. And in the day of the new moon, it shall be a young bullock without blemish and six lambs and a ram, they shall be without blemish. And he shall prepare a meat offering, an ephah for a bullock and an ephah for a ram, and for the lambs according as his hand shall attain unto, and a hen of oil to an ephah. And when the prince shall enter, he shall go in by the way of the porch of that gate, and he shall go forth by the way thereof. But when the people of the land shall come before Yahuwah in the solemn feast, he that entered in by the way of the north gate to worship shall go out by the way of the south gate. And he that entered by the way of the south gate shall go forth by the way of the north gate. So he shall not return by the way of the gate wherein he came in, but shall go forth uh, over against it. And the prince in the midst of them, when they go in, shall go in, and when they go forth, shall go forth. And in the feast and in the solemn, solemn, solemnities, the meat offering shall be an ephah to a bullock and an ephah to a ram and to the lambs as he is able to give and a hand of oil. So it's just going to show that even the prince is going to be doing these offerings. You see what I'm saying? So we got to understand that. We have to understand that because see now in this temple, we see that it's going to be the father that's going to be inside here. See, the father, the prince is going to be coming. He's he going to be coming and going. He's going to be around the people, talking to the people. And even though that this is going to, this is his sanctuary, but the father is going to be in here. That's what it sounds like to me. So I just want to uh, show y'all that. Now, uh, let's see, something else I wanted to show y'all. Real quick, uh, let me see. And it's about the uh, stranger, because even a stranger is going to be in the midst of this thing. Those that do what they what they were supposed to do, right? Those that understand this thing. And let's let's start at um, uh, chapter. Let's see, chapter forty-seven. Uh, I'm going to start at uh, verse six. And he said unto me, son of man, has thou seen this? Let me see something real quick. I just want you to see this and get some type of understanding. Then he brought me and caused me to return to the brink of the river. And when I had returned, behold, at the brink of the river were very, merry, very, very many trees on the one side and on the other. Then he said unto me, these waters issue out toward the east country and go down into the desert and go into the sea, which being brought forth into the sea, the water shall be healed. Uh oh, okay. And it shall come to pass that everything that liveth, which moveth, whithersoever the rivers uh, shall come, shall live. And there shall be a very great multitude of fish. Right, because we learned before that Ephraim is also called this, but we talking about fish now because these waters shall come thither, for they shall be healed, and everything shall live whether the river cometh. And it shall come to pass that the fisher shall stand upon it from Engedi, even unto an uh, and Eglane. They shall be a place to spread forth nets. Their fish shall come, be according to their kinds, and the fish of the great sea exceedingly many. But the miry places thereof and the marshes thereof shall not be healed. They shall be given to salt. And by the river upon the bank thereof and on the side and on the side shall grow all trees for meat, whose leaves shall not fade, neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed. It shall bring forth new fruit according to his months, because the waters they issued out of the sanctuary and the fruit thereof shall be for meat and the leaf thereof for medicine. So again, and if I went up here, um, let me not, let's let's hold our finger here. Let's go up here to 47 and 1. Uh, afterward, he brought me again into the door of the house, and, and behold, waters issue out from under the threshold of the house eastward. From the frontward, uh, from the forefront of the house stood toward the east, and the waters came down from under, from the right side of the house at the south side of the altar, right? So this is where all this water is going to be coming up under everything, but it's going to heal everything. And then at this point right here, guess what? It sounds like we're going to be vegetarians, 
right? And because you're going to have the leaves for meat and fruit, and then you're going to have um, uh, leaves also for medicine. Thus says Yahweh Elohim, this shall be the border wherein you shall inherit the land according to the 12 tribes of Israel. Joshua shall have two portions. What? And you shall inherit it, one, of, one as well as another, concerning that which I lifted up my hand to give it to your fathers. This land shall fall unto you for inheritance. All right. So now let's go down here to verse 21. So shall you divide this land unto you, to you according to the tribes of Israel. And it shall come to pass that you shall divide it by lot for inheritance unto you. And to the strangers that sojourn among you, which shall be got children among you, and they shall be unto you as born in the country among the children of Israel. They shall have inheritance with you among the tribes of Israel. And it shall come to pass that in what tribe the stranger should join if there shall he give him his inheritance, says Yahuwah. So we see that other nations, the people that understood what was going on and got away from church and started following these commandments, they going to be there too, just like it was in the beginning, just like it was in the middle, and now you're seeing it at the end. So I'm going to stop right there. I mean, because we could read this whole thing, but I just wanted to close this. I just wanted to go ahead and close out this uh this, uh, this class here and you know me I would go ahead and, and read all this anyway you know what I mean just so you can have, kind of have a better understanding but that's going to be it see I told you that was going to be a quick class so we're done with this class and we finished with it and so we ask father that you bless all those that came up here we ask that you remember us, Father, from day to day, from second to second, minute to minute, because we need you, Father, with this world going crazy like it is. We surely do need you. So uh, I guess, uh, well, again, Father, thank you. In Yahusha's name, I pray. Hallelujah. 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 Okay. So I told you it's going to be a quick class. I just wanted to finish it up. So now you kind of see what the temple is going to, for those interested, you see, you're getting a little bit more understanding about the temples. So you can, we can do a lot more research on it if you want to. I just kind of wanted to hit these little small things um, where we are at so you kind of get a better understanding. So with that, I thank you for coming up here and I'm gonna say shalom, shalom.